now 4 p.m. So good afternoon and a huge welcome to all of you as we begin our webinar. I'm Margaret Chan, the East Partners in Ministry Program Director. I'm your MC for this time. We are so thankful to our Father God that in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have this opportunity to bless you through today's webinar topic, Home Worship in 7 Easy Steps. The talk will take about 15 minutes, with the speaker answering your questions posted on Q&A at relevant points of her talk. At the bottom of your Zoom screen is an icon Q&A. Click on that and type in your questions that you have for the speaker. You can also vote on your preferred questions by clicking on the thumbs up icon. You can click on the chat icon and choose all panelists and attendees to type in your chat so we can interact with you during the webinar. After the speaker's time, we will show you a short video to introduce you to the Partners in Ministry program, the ministry that is hosting this webinar. We will then close our time with some announcements. Let me now pray for our webinar time. Father God, we are thankful to have this opportunity to share the topic Home Worship in seven easy steps with all the attendees. We pray that you will use the speaker's sharing to minister to all who are attending this webinar. May they learn useful principles and tips on how to disciple their children of different ages. May we all see the need to grow in our knowledge and walk with you. We pray also that you will protect our time, that we will have good Wi-Fi connection and sound throughout this webinar. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. It is now my privilege to introduce you to our speaker, Mrs. Josephine Lee. Josephine was born and raised in Hong Kong. When she was 19, her family immigrated to Vancouver, Canada. She has worked in marketing, fashion and interior design industries before receiving God's call to full-time ministry with her husband, Jacob. Together, they have two beautiful children, Josiah and Jesse. Josephine completed her Master's of Arts in Biblical Studies in 2013 at Dallas Theological Seminary. She and her husband have been serving at East since June 2015, where she currently serves as an adjunct faculty of the Partners in Ministry program. It's my joy to now pass the time over to Josephine. Thank you, Margaret. I am so excited to be here today. How I wish I can see all your faces, but we're in a webinar, so I cannot see your faces. But I know where you're from. Uh, most of you uh, have signed up for this uh, course. Actually, today we have over 15 different countries that signed up for this webinar. So I hope it will be a fruitful time for all of us. And I want to uh, especially want to thank all the parents who signed up for this uh, webinar. I hope that it will be a fruitful time for you to uh, learn some new ideas or get your kids interested in uh, home worship. And for those of you who are working in a youth ministry or children ministry, and I hope there will be a fruitful time for you as well to learn some new ideas for your ministry. Now for the grandparents, uh, I know that you also signed up for this class and I hope that uh, also, you know, you will gain some new ideas with your grandchildren. And I must tell you, my own spiritual journey, it was my grandparents play a major role in my life. Now, for those of you who don't have children and yet to have children, and this is a perfect time for you to come. And let me tell you, before I had my own kids, I start attending parenting classes. And I've been teaching Sunday school for years before I have children because I think it's important for me to try out teaching other, you know, other parents' kids before I teach my own kids. So today I get to, you know, use some of the skills that I've learned during the time that I, uh, you know, teaching in Sunday school. So having said that, uh, if you were like us, honestly, home worship sounds a little bit uh, heavy for us. And to be honest with you, for the longest time, we've been talking about having home worship at home and, you know, we have Bible, you know, reading with our children and also, you know, praying with them every night. But then home worship is something that we've been talking about for years, but we actually never do it. And also because our kids go to a Christian school and also our church has an awesome children program. So we didn't really see the need to do that. 
but because of COVID-19, God, you know, kind of pushed us into this direction. Uh, there was a, lab, a gap uh, between our church. Uh, there was a few months that we didn't have any children program online. So we felt, me and my husband felt very convicted. How can we nourish our children's spiritual lives in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic? And to be honest, most of the time, my husband and I are in full-time ministry. We prepare so much for other people's spiritual needs. So I felt extremely convicted, both of us, that we need to invest in our own children's needs, which is uh, honestly, is God's most uh, priority for us in our family. So today I want to show you uh, some of the tips, but before I do that, I want to ask you one quick question. Now I want you to type the answer on the chat, even though I cannot see your face, but I want to interact with you. Now, what do you think when you think about, think of one word, when you think about home worship, what is one word that came to your mind? When you think about home worship, what is one word that came to your mind? So now please, Go to your chat, type out that one word or one phrase uh, about home worship. Okay, some will say praise God. Okay, saying. Okay, very good. Okay, pray, pray. Okay, preparation, role modeling. Okay, excellent. Okay, now let me uh, tell you honestly, to be confessed with you, when I think about home worship, I honestly thinking about, uh, some of us may be thinking about this, that perfect family picture. Everyone hold the Bible and the dad would just, uh, you know, tell the passage of the Bible and the children would just look very intently at the daddy, oh, everyone sitting still and eagerly to learn from the truth. But to be honest with you, uh, mostly that is not the case. Or well, some of you are thinking, oh, home worship is a horrible thing. Uh, I'm not even a pastor. How am I going to, you know, uh, preach to my children every Sunday? Now, most of the time, home worship, it doesn't look like, you know, the, in the picture on the left. Instead, sometimes it looks like this, uh, where sometimes, you know, this is a quite an organized picture. Some of the kids, you know, my son will be lying on the floor and my daughter would run around in the living room. And the best part of home worship is because no one's going to judge you. It's not at the church. So this is a perfect time to do home worship. It's at the home that, you know, we can freely worship God. So I want all of us to think about seven things, uh, seven things we should consider before we do home worship. And I must tell you, uh, the journey of us, you know, doing this home worship thing has been an amazing journey. Of course, there are ups and downs. But we see the benefits, you know, that running home worship at the home. Now, let me tell you these seven things you should be considering. First thing, you should, your expectation. As I told you earlier, your expectation, we should be flexible, go with the flow and be realistic. And sometimes your kids are younger. I saw some of you type in your children or some of you are have babies or toddlers. And don't expect them to sitting still the whole time. And I think this is also a patience uh, training from God, how we can involve our children in the process. So it will be messy, it will not be tidy, but it's okay. Uh, another thing is uh, not to replace church. Home worship is not to replace church. Honestly, it's actually complement uh, church. Uh, so right now, especially while a lot of times we don't have, uh, may not, some of the churches may not have worship for children particularly, so how can we still keep that going with our own children at our home to complement that right now some of the churches are not able to offer? Another thing is getting them ready. Now, if you have children, you know, they've been, you know, watching, your iP watch, watching the iPad or doing something else. So give them five to 10 minutes warning and snacks time. So this is something that we've learned that, you know, get them ready before the home worship so that it's not uh, too messy when we actually get to the home worship that they will be complaining. I want snacks, I want this, I want that. Another thing is take away all the distractions, phones, even parents, uh, moms and dads, take away your mobile phones, not playing the video while you're checking your phones. So everybody take away the toys, gadget devices. Another thing is fix the time and place. Now, depends on the age of your children. I would say between 30 minutes to one hour. If your kids are younger, you want to do it, uh, you know, not too long because uh, their attention span is just not there. So if your kids, or uh, some of you have older children, I, as I can see, some of you have teenagers or adult children uh, where you can, you know, spend a little longer time. 
But the point is you want to keep it brief so that it's not too heavy uh, and schedule it once a week. So right now at our home, we do it once a week on Sunday. When we finish our adult service, we would do the children's service, uh, children home worship with, with our children. Another thing is very important. Remember to have fun, okay? Your goal is trying to get them fall in love with worshiping God freely, okay? So don't make it too rigid. Don't bring the church program home. And I remember one time one of my friends, uh, they're the pastor family. So they have a handful of children and ranging from two to 15 years old. And I remember she was telling me her children, uh, her older kids actually told her, mom, don't bring Sunday school home. We have enough church. So end up what they did was they actually gather every Wednesday night, just one hour of 30 minutes, 45 minutes before dinner. And the whole family would get together and the dad would start reading out passages. And then the whole family would dialogue, have discussions over the passage. Uh, the last but not least is perseverance and pray. Ask God to give you that vision, the desire for you to do that. And I must tell you, there's ups and downs, and uh, we've been done doing this for six months. Our home worship is not, you know, still not perfect. But you know what? Uh, later on, I'll share with you our journey. There's some of the mistakes and some encouragement God has given to us, and the rewards is amazing. Okay, so you're probably thinking about, now that I tell you we should do home worship, but you're probably thinking about why we should do that. Now, let me give you three reasons why we should do home worship. Uh, number one, it honors God. Of course, when we worship God together, it honors God. Secondly, it centers our family in Christ. And it's a great family bonding time on the issues of spiritual things. And later on, as I show you more examples, you will see why I say that. Uh, number three, it's a great investment in a children's spiritual life. And to be honest, if we do it right, not too religiously or too rigidly that they, you know, instead of, you know, uh, loving it, they, they're not hating it. Okay, so that will be something that can pass on for generations to come to your grandchildren, great grandchildren. That will be something that will be practiced in different homes. Uh, now, let me ask you a quick question. What do you think is the greatest responsibility for parents? Okay, let me ask you quick, type quickly. What do you think is the greatest responsibility for parents? What is our greatest responsibility for parents? So let type in quickly in the chat. If you could do that, what do you think is the greatest responsibility uh, for parents? Okay, in parting phase, when you say discipleship, children the love God, introduce discipling our kids, uh, inherit our faith, wonderful, and children to know God personally, point our children to God. Excellent, those are excellent answers, wonderful. Now, let me give you this verse here, which is one of my favorite verse. And I think this is one of the most important verses for families, uh, which is from Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 8. Uh, we all know that this is, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in a Jewish culture, they call it Shema. It's one of the things that they will recite daily to profess uh, their faith to God, their, uh, their, uh, their faith in, in God. So this is the verse that when Moses uh, actually spoke to Israelites about this command, when they just moved to Canaan, where it's a land of you know full of uh honey and milk and then also a land full of idols of god worshiping different kinds of gods baal and also pleasures comfort and money and this is quite similar to what we have here in the very present date but there are three very important truths that come from this verse uh, let us go into uh looking at these verses Okay, the three truths. First of all, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think this command is given to? Was it given to the children or was it given to parents? Now, obviously, it's given to the parents. Like, what do we love the most? Like, the one, what is that one thing we love the most? Now, if you ask your children, what would they say that is that one thing you love the most? Would they say your relationship with God that you love God, you know, you love God the most is your main, the most priority in your life? Or would they say, oh, they, oh my, my parents, my mom loves Korean drama. Or my dad loves golf. Uh, you know, my dad, you know, uh, loves his work. 
Uh, when you ask them this question, what would they think? Has your work or ministry or other things become more important than your personal relationship with God? And one thing I've learned over the years, I have many gods in my life, to be honest, even though I was, you know, a Christian. And for the longest time, I have different gods in my life, different hobbies, interests that took over my desire for God. So uh, that has been something that I need to work on because without that intimate relationship with God, we cannot set a good example for our children. Another thing is I love this verse here. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Now, years ago, I went to a conference in Dallas. Uh, the whole conference is a family conference. It's about D6 conference in Dallas, and which is based on this verse. And the whole conference, my takeaway was impress. Impress. Impress our children of our faith. Now, what does it mean? It doesn't mean that, wow, now we bombard children 24-7 with all the spiritual jargons, with all the spiritual teachings. No, we impress them with our faith. You know, not legalistically, that the fact that we, we are able to walk the talk, not being hypocrites. Now, a lot of times, a lot of children walk away their faith when they are in teenage years because sadly, sometimes they see the hypocrisy in the home. Maybe the parents say one thing and when they're at the church, uh, you know, uh, a church has totally become a very holy face, right? So they don't see the alignment between at home and at church. So do your children see you read your Bible and pray? And how about your relationship with your spouse? Do they see you guys have a harmony in your relationship? Now, I'm not saying that we don't fight, okay? It is an impossible. But do they see that you put party investing in your marriage? And in our family, you know, God really impressed in our heart that we need to invest in our marriage. Because without a strong marriage, there's no strong parenting. It's hard to parent at the same team if you're not in good terms with our, with our spouse. It's a very difficult situation. And us children knows that when we're not in, a, you know, in the same team. Um, how you treat others. Do your children want to be like you when they grow up? Do they see a difference? that our faith made in our lives. Now, I'm not saying that now we have to be super, you know, saint, uh, that we don't make any mistakes. But on the contrary, how do we face our problems? How we face our struggles in our lives? Do our children see our faith actually help us to go through the struggles and, and our challenges in our lives? So last but not least, this verse tells us, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, where you lie down, when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Now, we're not talking about like like the law of a Jewish, uh, Jewish people right now in Israel, where they would, uh, the pious one especially, they would wear the, you know, the scripture on the forehead and on the hand. And they also put a little box called a masutso, where there's a little box with a scripture on, on the on the door frame. Now, we're not talking about, you know, doing all this uh, thing to show that our devotion to God. But instead, this verse actually tells us about being intentional. Uh, intentionally being present in our children's lives so that we can impart uh, the truth to them while we're walking, maybe we're going shopping, while we, you know, uh, visiting a zoo or just a family outing. Now, the thing is, if we are not even being present in our children's life, like you're so busy with your work, well, even with ministry, which is something that a lot of ministry families really struggle, is the dad or the whoever in full-time ministry is being absent in a home and not even being able to presence to make a difference in a children's life. And so let me ask you this question. Are you being intentional in investing the time and energy and efforts in your own children's spiritual life? Do they see you love your work or ministry or other things more than them? And you know what? I've been very convicted, I think, recently that, you know, our children are the most important disciples in our lives. Our children are the most important disciples in our lives. So now that we talk about the why, so now I'll give you the practical parts of how can we do the how. So these are the seven steps that uh, we kind of improve over the last few months to come up with these seven steps. 
but uh, be honest with you, don't think this is the Ten Commandments, okay? So make sure you tweak it uh, according to your family needs, because every family is different, and your children age, and uh, so it's different. So make sure you know you can tweak it, and feel free to tweak it according to your family needs. Okay, let's dive in. The first one is singing. Some of you have mentioned it earlier. Singing is part of home worship. Excellent. That's right. So what we've been doing is. Um, you just pick one or two songs or ask your children in advance uh, what kind of song they want to sing. But if you have older kids like teenagers about, just let them to lead the inspiration time. Uh, so for the longest time, I think when we first started, I, we kind of drove ourselves crazy. We kind of think of two, three new songs every week to sing with our children. But we've learned that, you know, uh, actually our children don't like learning new songs every week. So what happened is uh, in recent months, we have learned to be more smart in uh, preparing our home worship. So what we did was we picked the theme of our, we pick on a series of a topic that we're going to talk about and we sing the same song again and again for the next few weeks. And we've been watching Satellite Back Church uh, in US and it has been a great blessing. They have an awesome uh, online children teaching. So we've been following that series. So we basically just follow what they do. Uh, and I'll show you, you know, uh, it's a fun time for family dancing and be silly together. So I'll show you this clip quickly. So as you can see, you know, my daughter is the one who loves to dance around and freely. We want to create an environment for children that they can worship God freely. So it's important, you know, they can you know, express themselves freely when they worship God. So we don't make them sitting down, you know, you know, sitting down so that you can sing kind of thing. We let them dance freely. So as a family, we do it together. Uh, this is in our family with the older kids, which this family is very talented. That give you, I want to give you an example. Okay, so your children don't have to be like this family where they everyone like the son, wow, it's like a great pianist. But you you know the point is involve your children in the process. And uh, so that's just give you an example. Uh, step number two, just to pray. Ask your kids to pray, say a quick prayer so that we can start, you know, the worship time together. Step number three, which is our children's favorite, uh, which is play and game uh, activities. Now we call this a hook. If you have uh, taught Sunday school before, or other classes before that we need a hook, uh, to hook a children to fall in love with the lesson. So this is a hook for a lesson, which is help them to be interested and engage uh, for the following, uh, you know, our lesson together. So we will play a game or activity related to the lesson. And this is a very important step. And later on, I'll show you this website called Pinterest. Maybe most of you have known about this website. You can go on there find all the resources that you need for any ideas so let me show you a few examples that what we've been doing at home so this one example here is the Father's Day and uh, so uh, I got this idea from Pinterest basically I just have all the children uh, wearing daddy's clothes within one minute to mimic the daddy on the earth but at the same time I want them to also understand our daddy on the daddy on earth may not be perfect sometimes, but we have to imitate our father in heaven who is always perfect. So daily, we have to put on godly characters to follow him. Good job. <laughs> All right. Good it. job, All guys. Right. All right, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, our kids had loads of fun when we actually do this exercise together. So that's why every time we finish the activity, they would keep asking, can we do more? So here's yeah. another one. Uh, this is about body of Christ. Uh, 
So this one is about body of Christ. So we have the lesson on uh, without the body parts, it's actually very hard to function. So we kind of use it the minute to win it game. So uh, another one that we do is uh, we have done is this one uh, called how to hear the shepherd's voice. So basically we blindfold our children, even daddy was, uh, you know, being blindfolded. So we have one person being the shepherd's voice. In this case is my, uh, uh, my husband's voice. So, and then all me and Jesse, uh, she's six years old. We were trying to create all the noise that's happening in the background to distract him. So it's like a little noise that happening in this world. Sometimes we, it's very hard for us to hear the shepherd's voice. That's why we need to learn to hear his voice. Passage on John 10. So we learned to hear our shepherd's forward. voice. Forward. Forward. No, you're supposed to say like Yeah, we right. distract them. Okay, no, you keep going. When I say you're right, you're right. Okay, stop. Stop. Okay. Okay. Turn left. Forward. Turn right. Another. Turn to your left. Turn okay. to your right. Take another step. Turn okay. to your left. Okay. Oh, Go down. Turn to right. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, it's family worship can also be a fun time and fun bonding time with our kids. Now, if you have older children, they might not into one of these games, but it's okay. So here's ask a suggestion that. for you. Uh, you can also search on Pinterest, which I told you about. Uh, you can ask them to do the M&Ms thing, ask them to share what's in their heart and their other activities here that you can also do with them, share something that was good or bad and what God been teaching you and act out the Bible scene or charades, uh, show and tell ask them to show you a picture uh, with their friend it's a selfie that tells something that is very happy happening or ask them to show you a picture that's something that's been uh, very difficult recently in their lives so the point is what all these activities I've suggested so far not only you can work you know use it for your children even you do Bible studies for adults uh, you can still use these type of activities uh, for other uh, purposes uh, so uh, and step number four, which is the Bible lesson step, uh, teach it yourself or search online and must be age appropriate. Now, sometimes we, I, we make a mistake and I notice that uh, there's certain things will work for my daughter because my daughter is six years old. My son is 10 years old. So there's a huge gap how we should find the material. And I find that oftentimes for my younger daughter, uh, the video has to be short and simple to understand. The words that are being used must be simple and more graphic in some sense, like the, in terms of the uh, animations and stuff. So, uh, so we've been, uh, and for my son, I would ask him to read the scriptures because uh, he, he's able to read. My daughter is not at the age where sh she can read confidently. Uh, so there are a few websites that we really fall in love uh, that find it very helpful. Uh, so, and then also we will use this time to share our testimonies with our children and our faith journey on a certain topic. Uh, so I think it's a very fruitful time that we share our struggles uh, with our children as well, based on the lessons that, uh, that we touched on. Um, and I want to um, tell you, there might be times that you will feel discouraged when you do the home worship. And I must be honest with you, I still remember one week I was very discouraged and our work has uh, so much to do that week that I felt like, God, is this even worth it? Because uh, sometimes, you know, your kids may not be paying 100% uh, you know, attention to you. Are they even listening? And But I think because of this week, that was the week when my daughter was, um, it was her birthday, it was in July. And that was the week I had to prepare for the worship that week. And I think God has used this incident to encourage me. What happened was uh, we were doing the lesson on John the Baptist and uh, I pick out one story from the YouTube and then the John the Baptist scene, one of them was when Jesus go down to the uh, river and uh, all of a sudden the heaven opens up and then there's a dove came down to, um, came down on Jesus. And then afterwards, my daughter surprisingly told us, mommy, daddy, I want the gift of heaven for my birthday gift. I want the gift of heaven for my birthday gift. And you know what? To be honest with you, at that moment, oh, we felt so encouraged and surprised. And oftentimes how we easily rely on the church program or other things to help our kids in their spiritual journeys. And little did we know we could be part of this spiritual delivery room of our own children. And you have no idea the joy that we had that day. I think it's God's way of telling me, this is all worth it. And I will show you a little clip of what, uh, you know, that scene that happened. Jesus. 
Who is the way to heaven? I now receive Jesus into my life. I now receive Jesus into my life. I ask you for to forgive my sins. I ask you to forgive my sins. And I believe Jesus died for my sin. And I believe Jesus died for my sin. So that I can go be go to heaven and be with you. So I can go to heaven and be with you. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So this is your best birthday yeah. gift. So I want to tell you that was a joyous moment in our family. And not only that, my son Josiah, who is sitting next to Jesse, you know, afterwards he also asked, Hey, can I also get the gift of heaven? So at that day, both of our children you know, want to say yes to Jesus, want to get the gift of heaven. And of course, it's been a prayer for them that this is not just an emotional response to God. And uh, we've been praying how we can actually groom them, disciple them to be true followers of Jesus. And this is not an easy journey at all without God's help. And if you have older children, uh, one thing that last week, if you've been to our webinar, uh, suggested by one of the faculty, Josephine also, and uh, she suggested us about this something called spiritual readings. Uh, basically, uh, what she suggested is pick any verses or actually less than a passage with less than five verses and read it three times. And each time you would kind of suggests at the end to ask a question. So this is what she suggests here. So what she did was using Psalm uh, 23, one to four. And then after each time she read, like the first time after she read the passage, she would say what word or short phrases uh, kind of uh, strike or capture your heart as you listen. And then the second time, how does this word or phrase touch your heart? And third time, what is God's invitation uh, to you? And I remember her testimony sharing uh, that week when her son actually going through a transition in the in the school. And then the son shared afterwards, you know, the verse, the phrase that closed beside me really, you know, God was using that to speak to my heart. And you know what? I think I know that even though I'm going through this transition and God will be close beside me. And the family was very joyful to share that moment with him. Uh, another thing that uh, other resources I want to share with you is very worthwhile, especially the first one, Alpha Youth Series. Uh, I highly recommend it because to be honest with you, uh, one thing I felt extremely sad when I was uh, being a Sunday school teacher a lot of children come to my class. I've taught from three years old to uh, 15, 16 zero years old before. And oftentimes I will ask them a question. Why do you come to church? And oftentimes they would say, oh, oh, you know, my parents made me to come to church. And when I ask more about the gospel, and a lot of times they, they don't even know what the gospel means. And, you know, I find that a lot of times when we assume um, the church has been done a great job. But, you know, I think it's also the parents' responsibility to share the good news with our own children. And to be honest with you, Alpha Youth Series is one of those uh, that, you know, you can sign up with your kids online and go through the process with them. And the questions being asked, like, who is Jesus? Why did he die on the cross? You know, all the things that we talked about regarding our faith that opens up a floor, a discussion, a free discussion that you can share your thought without being judgment and this is one thing that we really find it bless, uh, such a blessing and we ran the adult version in a home Vancouver long uh, for many years and this is such a great tool to actually evangelize to our own children another website is called Christianity Explore also gospel based and I just checked out the recent uh, website recently and they have excellent speakers that will answer some of the very tough questions it's the Bible is true, Tim Keller, and then uh, some of the tough questions that's online, uh, you know, that you can actually go online and watch it with your kids and dialogue with them. And uh, another one is very good, it's called Passport to Purity, which is from Family Life, uh, five sessions, and some of our colleagues have been doing this with their children, especially teenagers, and they find it very fruitful. Because this series is about preparing teenagers, uh, you know, for the transition periods, that the things that they will face, sex, 
uh, peer pressures, uh, you know, all sorts of things that have been challenging for, uh, for, for, for teenagers. So they find it extremely fruitful. And there are other projects, like this another website called Bible Projects. Uh, there are tons of videos on there that you can discuss a dialogue with your teenagers, Christian movies. So there are tons of material online that will help you. All right, so uh, let's go into step number five, discussions. Ask two to three questions for spiritual discussion based on the lesson. Allow them to ask questions about our faith. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, so let's stop for a minute here. Uh, why should we ask question? Why should we ask question? Type in the chat. I want you to type in the chat. Why should we ask question to our children when we have Bible lessons? Everybody type on the chat. Yeah. Okay. Some of you say check understanding. Excellent. So if we know they follow, very good. To clarify doubts, check the understanding. Very good. Excellent. To gauge understanding, encouragement. A certain they understand. Very good. They ensure they understand. Excellent. So you all get the point. Excellent. Very good. So it's important that we engage them in dialogue and discussion because this discussion will help them understand our faith more. And I'll expand it uh, more in a minute. So um, when we talk about discussion, what kind of questions we should ask our children? Uh, let me give you some examples. Uh, some of the questions you can ask your questions about the passage could be uh, who, what, when, where, why, how. So this is basically if you read any literatures, any, uh, you know, type of literatures, you would do something like this. You would ask them who, what, when, where, why, how. Uh, so in the same way, when you look at the passage, you can ask this question. Or a simple thing like this, what did you learn about God or the main characters in this story? Uh, what is one thing you can apply this week? Do you have any questions regarding our lesson today? Or if you have one question to ask God, what would that be? Now, I tell you what, the last two questions is such a good way to test uh, the doubts in our faith uh, or sort of any things that in their heart, especially uh, anything they, you know, uh, about the lesson, either with a lesson or about our faith in God. Uh, another type of questions you can ask if you have teenagers or older kids, you can ask them something like, what have been, what, have you been learning from the word? What has the Lord been impressing upon you? What's your response to him? So these are some of the questions that you can ask your older kids or even you lead Bible study. You can use these uh, questions to engage uh, with, your, um, uh, with, your, with your group. Uh, other questions should be something like this, deeper life questions for teenagers and about, okay, what are some of the life lessons that you learn? What is going well in your life, right? What is hard being challenging for you? Uh, what changes would you make in your life? And what things people experience are meaningful to you? What is your life purpose? So as you can see, all these questions can really, you know, for you to engage with your uh, older children. Uh, I want to show you this picture. It's very funny. But I think nowadays, if you notice, if we go to the mall, go to the shop, we all have to do a temperature check. In the same way, when we have spiritual discussion with our children, it's like a spiritual temperature test with our children. And we need that test. We need the free flow of discussions that our children can ask questions freely so that, you know, we can have this conversation with them and pray along with them uh, and not be alarmed at the same time. Now, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you had a spiritual temperature check or a spiritual conversation with your children? Uh, sometimes it is so easy for us as parents. Uh, we often talk a lot instead of listening a lot. And that some of the time is some of our um, hurdle that we're not able to understand our children's world because we're too busy talking, lecturing, preaching, and uh, giving instructions, and fail to understand and listen to them. Uh, I love this uh, book, uh, the author Terry Given said, how, how doubt can actually strengthen our faith. Doubt for us leads to capacity to ask genuine questions. And a genuine question is a question born out of curiosity, a yearning to, learn, to know. When our children ask questions, let's not freak out for a minute. Uh, let's take that opportunity, even though you don't know the questions, it's a great opportunity for you and your kids to learn together. Just go online, search for the answer together. And that will be such a great family bonding time and learning time together. Now, if you've been thinking, you've been very discouraged, I have not done any of this. 
and I think this is impossible for me and I've been having a very bad relationship with my children and uh, let me encourage you start building rebuilding that relationship with your children first maybe instead of asking them oh how was your uh, your math did you pass your t math or you know uh, how was your recital uh, did you do a good job so maybe change that conversation a little bit instead of asking those task oriented questions maybe try to understand the world and you know it's never too late to start to start something and be intentional have a coffee date uh, a lunch day a shopping date without any preaching lecturing giving instructions how about just for a change talk about something they want to talk about and just listen to them so without that relationship it's hard for us to impart any 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 advice to our children especially when they're older uh, one thing that uh, this family do is a Korean family and uh, their family would gather up uh, their older kid the kids are older uh, they from 11 teenagers so this is what they do their family time every Thursday this is after dinner they would gather up the family and and read a passage and allow the kids would ask any difficult questions they have about their faith so some of the questions that kids would ask is it okay to seek God only when I'm in trouble well I don't feel God uh, why is the Bible is true now by understanding our uh, children's journey you know you the, by listening to these questions you will understand our children's journey their walk with God and how can we guide them in the process without judgment without uh, doubtful uh, that you know God is not there I'll know my my son gonna turn atheist uh, but you have trust that God allowed this time that you can walk with your children if they have doubt in their faith and also this family choose to do that once a year they will share a clear gospel message with their with their children okay having said that uh, let me show you quickly one uh, quick example about our uh, sample our lesson plan so you can get an idea of uh, actually uh, what how does it look like in real life and let me uh, also tell you that you don't have to be uh, do it on a PowerPoint but for our family because we find it easier on the PowerPoint but you don't really don't have to do it basically you can also just you know uh, follow the steps and kind of use your phone or TV whatever uh, so this is something that I'll give you a sample uh, example here uh, so this is we follow this template for for a few weeks now uh, before I kill myself and our husband also kill ourselves we spend three four hours preparing for our worship because every week we're trying to do something different so you don't have to do that and now we learn the tricks we just follow the simple template which I told you before now we've been following satellite um, uh, kids church and they've been going through the fruit of the spirit and so we just follow the series so what we do is we just change the Bible content uh, of that segment uh, so this is we do a welcome and then we do just one song um, so this is one song that from uh, YouTube So this song our children knows how to sing it they even taught us the gesture uh, you know as we sing you have to do faster and faster and faster so we have so much fun you know learning from them so that they feel they also part of uh, the worship together so this is what uh, we've been singing for the past few weeks so we really kind of sing it to almost to the heart and uh, this is a very funny song another thing that we do is uh, besides a song so we would um, also read the scripture the main passage uh, main verses from the from the lesson and I would we would ask our children especially my son to read it because he's able to read it uh, and then we'll follow satellite back uh, settle, settle back so as you can see, settle back uh, church, they've done a great job and they have the Bible lesson. And uh, they have this uh, uh, like an animation have. thing. Several people decided to follow Jesus that night. In and then not only they have uh, you know Bibles, Bible teaching, also make it to real life. So um, so it's been very uh, fruitful, very easy to follow. Basically, I just have to, we just have to search for the video and then play it that week. And then we discuss uh, after that. So after that, we would, um, so after the lesson, we would just, um, oh. 
So we would uh, also explain a little bit what is joy means, being happy when things don't go well because God promised to care for us. So we kind of explain a little bit what joy is like. And then we will have, uh, you know, kind of fun picture time, but also a question time. So each of us have to tell each other, I feel happy when da 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 da. So each of us would take turns to share what makes us happy. So this is a great time also to understand, you know, each other. What makes our children happy? What can we do to deposit in the love bank? If you know that term, the emotional bank, how can we do that to also, you know, invest in their uh, emotional bank? So, and then also we always say, what makes us feel sad? Uh, like, so when then we would take turns to explain what makes us feel sad. And then we'll try to, you know, kind of, uh, impress in the heart more I can be joyful because God will take care of me so we take turns this is Jesse so she will say it we'll tell help her to say it and then Josiah will say it and then we will say it and then it's the craft time so that's uh, just a sample of uh, what we do at a home and uh, so let me just uh, quickly show you um, the last two step here uh, so as you can see very easy the last two step is pray for each other this is something we've been doing at a home called TSP. Uh, you can use it at nighttime with your uh, with your kids before they go to bed. Uh, basically, T is Thanksgiving, so we would take turns. Even my six year old daughter, she would take turns to say something thankful for, uh, and then uh, we we'll say something that we're sorry for, and then we ask God, which is P, then ask God to provide for us and for others. And you'll be surprised uh, how much you can learn from just hearing each other's prayer requests. And our children also pray for our needs, uh, especially the times that, you know, it's difficult. Like today, I have to do a webinar. I've been asking our children, been praying for us. And yesterday, my husband had to do his, also did his webinar. And we asked the children to share with them, hey, let's pray for daddy, mommy too. You know, we need your prayer. So it was an exchange time that, you know, God is real in all our aspect of our lives so we want our son our children to be part of our faith journey as well they can also pray for mommy daddy when mommy daddy are you know in need uh, another thing is if your kids are older like teenagers and stuff just simple as this how can i pray for you uh, we can do this with our friends with our church bible study group as well how can i pray for you what is one thing that is high you know a share high and low what is something that you're thankful for something excited about and the low what is something been difficult and challenging and you don't have to prepare much than asking that question uh, last but not least step number seven which is the arts and craft and you know to be honest with you i must say uh when I asked my son, hey, what's your highlight of the home home worship experience? <laughs> and then he said, you know, of course we wish he would say, oh, Bible lesson and inspiration and all that. No, he did not say that, but which is okay. And he said, uh, actually, my favorite part is when we do craft together as a family, that we're sitting down at the table, that we do something together as a family. Uh, for my son, his love language is quality time. So we know that this time that we, we, we didn't know even a home worship time can be time to nourish our family bonding. And it's such a great time that we can use this to speak to our children's uh, love language as well. So I'm gonna show you a few crafts that we've been doing at our home. Um, uh, some of these I actually basically just download from Pinterest and I'll show you in a quick minute uh, how you can go to this website uh, just uh, Jesus bread of life and then uh, this one is body of Christ and uh, I just used the marshmallow if you remember earlier the minute to win it when we had the marshmallow contest I just reuse it and for the crafts uh, segment and to be honest with you my son is a creative type so whenever I tell him do a craft that I prepare, you know, do this, the stick man, this is our craft today. He would always come up with something different, very creative, very new. Okay, so at the beginning, I feel like, huh, why didn't you follow my instructions? But as, as I learned, actually, you know what? It's a time for them to also express themselves freely. So I kind of, God kind of convicted me that, you know, sometimes even though what you planned it may not go the way you want it, but this is a time that your children can also express themselves freely. Okay, try not to uh, be controlled too much. And this is time that they can also enjoy and be free to express themselves. Another thing is, uh, this is my uh, husband's turn to teach. And that week he was teaching us how to do the uh, uh, armor, the shield. And I want to tell you how important to have 
daddy involved in the process of home worship. So this is not just a, a mommy thing to invest in the children's spiritual life because the fact that daddy can be, I think personally should be daddy's role to be the major role, to be the one who engaging uh, to initiate it which I'm thankful my husband been helping us, uh, you know, in this journey. And he see, they see daddy also part of this, doing silly things like this. You know, they just admire daddy. Hey, uh, daddy can do silly thing, things with us. So um, this is something that has been very fruitful and helpful in a family. And another thing is you have older kids. Uh, this is the uh, teenager's family. What they've done is they print out this, uh, uh, like a personality or character thing that every family members have to put their name. So each family members, let's say four of them, how do you think about mommy? So you would have to, you know, circle up or color the ones that you think would describe mommy. So at the end of the session, so each family members would know how the other family member sees them. So it's also a great way to, you know, see hey, how your kids are thinking about you. Are there any things that I need to change so that I could, you know, be, uh, you know, be a more effective parents? Uh, and also another thing is I want to encourage you the art and craft time could turn into something that is the Bible study uh, in action time. And our goal is we hope to build a missional family, not just a family that we would just care for ourselves, but we as a family, how can we also outreach as a family? That would be our arts and craft projects. So here are a few things that we've done before. I want to give you some suggestion. Write a letter to family members uh, to show love. And you don't know how much my sister appreciate this gesture and my dad in Hong Kong when we send them WhatsApp of the letter that my kids show the love for them. I love you so much, Gong Gong. And I love you this, you know, and they're so excited receiving those letters and do an act of kindness to the family members or other others uh, pray for persecuted church and I, I've been asking our son to do a, a project every week uh, to pray for a missionary or uh, so he has to draw uh, do a little um, uh, PowerPoint thing for us to understand which country we should pray for that week uh, packing uh, Christmas boxes uh, care packages and some of the students and great needs in the seminary and later on we'll tell you about the needs of our students and we hope that you can also be part of a journey to invest in a, a student a lot of them came from persecuted countries and they came with nothing and it's by faith that they could be here and your 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 uh, financial support will help them so much prepare small gifts to cheer friend bring a meal to a family and need visit senior homes and and that's been something Thing that I have uh, been doing with my uh, children, especially when they're young and babies, uh, because that was the only thing I could do. I was a stay-at-home mom, but it brings so much joy to the people in staying at home. But nowadays we can't do that. Uh, volunteering work or think of ideas as a family. So I just want to give you a great uh, recap. We've been talking about a lot of things, and uh, what I want to give you a simplified version in case you think, oh, this seven step too much for me okay so let me trim it down for you okay uh the seventh step is like the same pray play a game bible lesson discussion pray for each other arts and craft the simplified version is this uh, if you're older kids you might not do everything but praise and worship devotional discussion and pray i think that's definitely the things that uh you don't want to miss and however you want to play it out whether it's more like a home worship or more like a family devotion time you set a time each week uh, just to get up just be intentional to do that and remember this is a great time for a spiritual temperature check and for your family uh, at the end, I want to encourage you, be intentional, just do it, okay? Just do it. Uh, it might not be perfect at the beginning, which is okay, and you know, to be honest, our home worship is still not okay. Our kids still running around, and sometimes you're wondering, oh, are they even listening? But you know what? We see the fruits, and you know, God honors our effort, uh, even though we may not see it. And the fact that you're willing to spend this time with your children, and they know you love them, and that's matter the most. Uh, to end our time, I want to give you some extra resources and I'll let you read through them because it was sent to you. I'm not going to take time to do it right now. Uh, just some of the resources that I mentioned earlier that will give you song, Bible lesson, online videos and online church. Uh, if you want to do that and then the whole uh, uh, webinar, uh, I put it in a, a, a article like this for you. And for the adults, uh, some of them I mentioned earlier. 
uh, teenagers and their other website for devotional online resources. Uh, and then some of the resources that I found was very helpful for teenagers and you also can look at them. And then another resource that I find it very helpful, one of the mother actually mentioned to me before, is a, a website, as an app that you pay, but they is it's an excellent app that you talk about basic theology. So it would talk about atonement, soteriology, what is salvation, uh, what is, uh, you know, angelologies. So this would be a great time for you to learn with your children as well. Uh, another thing is my son loved Minecraft. So I bought, you know, we bought a lot of Minecraft Bibles for him and then for my daughter. Uh, and then there are some family devotional book. I, I especially like the day, our daily bread, which is our, uh, almost often go to this uh, resource. And this is also an excellent book, which they talk about, share about all the Bible study, all pointing back to Jesus this is an excellent resource. And last but not least, this is one of my favorite that I've been doing with my son. We've been doing this with my son uh, over the summer when we had the circuit breakdown. Basically, it's a Bible study method uh, for children version from precept. So I've been going through this with my son, especially because I want him to learn how to study the Bible, you know, at his age. Uh, so having said that, uh, we actually now offering a class for moms, especially for female students for Bible study method class. Uh, and that is something that you might consider to use it and reach uh, your, yourself and also use it to bless your kids. Because if you don't know, how can you teach your children? So this is one thing that we offer for female students because it's under partner ministry program. And there's info, more information will be coming out if you're auditing this course. Uh, you, uh, this tuition is free. And then uh, this would be the, the website that you should go to. So don't worry, we will send you all the details in October and you will have a PowerPoint if you are interested. So let me finish here for now. And uh, I'm going to pass the time back to Margaret. Thank you, Josephine, for sharing the seven easy steps of home worship with all of us. You have definitely made home worship such a meaningful and creative time for both parents and children. I'm especially ministered by your emphasis on parents engaging their children in a discussion and not just giving them a lecture. You also mentioned that they need to respond to their children's doubts, not in a negative way, but as opportunities for them to learn to grow. Wow, what wise uh, tips for us as parents. Well, we all look forward to review the lessons learned from you by looking through the slides that we will receive later via email. So thank you once again, Josephine, for sharing with us. Uh, we will now have another five minutes uh, to give you some announcements. Josephine and I both serve at East Partners and Ministry Program. So we will now show a short video to introduce you to the PIM program. I hope that short video has given you some idea of what PIM is about. Before we close our time, I'd like to give just a few announcements. 
uh, Josephine has announced earlier on that she'll be teaching a course, uh, Bible study methods in the next semester. And you can see that poster on your screen. Then there's also another course that we are offering after that, which is the course Becoming Who God Intended. Yes, this course Becoming Who God Intended is also a 13 weeks course conducted from July to November of 2021 and I'll be the course instructor. For details of the two courses, do visit our website at east.edu.sg. Finally, to help East fulfill our mission to develop Christ-like leaders to fulfill the Great Commission, we want to give you an opportunity for a free will offering as the Lord so leads you. So let's look at some slides for the necessary information. The mission of East is to equip Christ-like leaders for the fulfillment of the Great Commission in Asia and beyond. We need your partnership in giving to our scholarship fund for students who come from DD countries, multiplying East Extension Centers for the equipping of leaders in Asia and the running of the school. The next slide. You can give uh, by scanning the pay now QR code. In the banking app, you can scan the QR code or, or enter the UEN number 19720238NEAS. For the UEN bill reference number, state purpose of gift, building, student aid, extensions, library, or most needed or you can visit east.ac slash give for other giving methods. After this webinar, you will be receiving a feedback email from us. And we really appreciate you giving us your honest feedback. We will also be sending you the webinar slides for this webinar. As we close our webinar, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to join us. I hope you have benefited much from this webinar. Let me close our time in prayer. Father God, we thank you for seeing us through this webinar time today. We pray that you will guide all attendees in applying what they have learned from this webinar to have more interesting and meaningful times of engagement in helping their children grow in their walk with you. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless all of you, and bye uh, for now. Uh, actually, sorry, I just have a quick announcement. Uh, sorry, uh, that there are two questions being asked in the um, uh, Q and A. I want to take another five minutes, if it's okay, of your time, that to answer that two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, the first one is how can wives and mothers encourage dads to get involved and lead worship if the dad is busy at work, tired, and not interested? Now, this is a very common question, I'm sure, for a lot of families where daddy is very occupied at work. But maybe uh, this is something that uh, you can do baby steps uh, to add, invite your husband to be part of this home worship experience or home devotional experience. It could be like asking daddy, can you just pray, uh, you know, spend 30 minutes with us on every Wednesday night uh, just to sit with us and then just pray for our worship time together. Or maybe just, you know, do a quick uh, devotion share, um, not devotion, some uh, text, testimony sharing, uh, you know, uh, so something very simple, just little by little and engaging uh, your husband along. And sometimes they might also, like me before, like us before, we have a very scary thought about family devotion and we don't, we didn't even know how to start. So maybe you share some notes with them uh, that, you know, it's not that hard. And the process is actually a very fruitful time for family bonding time. Uh, another one is if your kids are attending cell group, how do they tailor the home worship so they don't feel over spiritualized? That is an excellent question. Now, if that's the case, you might want to trim down the actual, you know, the steps that I gave you. That was a full on, you know, seven step. But what the major, uh, the key things that you want to do is to have dialogue with your children on spiritual matters. So you might want to do it very informally. Maybe you go out a date with your, with your son or daughter 
just be intentional uh, going out to you know how's your life recently and then you do it a very informal way and slowly maybe you can say hey uh, why don't we want you know just look at this passage together and then just have dialogues right uh, so sometimes we also have to build relationship with the children first before we can impart any advices or spiritual truth in the children's life uh, so uh, some of you also mentioned where can we get the, our daily bread uh, for kids I don't see it at uh, Techcom okay so I order for online from um, uh, from Amazon and uh, you can order from there if you live in US and, uh, and if you live in Singapore I encourage you go to uh, media uh, um, which is uh, mass media which is our crew Singapore uh, bookstore you can also go there to find it uh, some of you asked if our kids already attending cell groups how do we tailor the homework oh which is i answered that question uh, so some of you also say my kids already going to attending youth service every sunday is there still a need to organize home worship now this is really up to you and i personally my son also goes to a uh right now we have a wonderful church uh, online program well for our, our son which is a sunday school online class but you know what i see the benefits of doing it being intentional as a family to be part of our children's spiritual life so we have made it a commitment now in a family we would do it as a family now it doesn't have to be long uh, it could be 30 to 45 minutes and you could do it in a form like a family devotion time you don't have to be like a full on what i've just shown you uh, you can be just over the table as again once again it's just being intentional initiate those spiritual conversation so i think i have answered all the questions uh if there are no more questions i think we can end our time together and uh, we thank you for staying on for another seven minutes of our time Oh, song choices sorry one more uh do we need do we go for easy to memorize song or scripture based ones or popular ones uh i think it really depends on your family and uh you know your kids uh whether they enjoy uh memorizing a song for us we don't memorize the song uh it's just that you know uh this song that we picked for example the fruit of the spirit it's just go with a the theme uh, and then it happens to our children actually introduce us to that song so we've been sticking with that song uh, for for some time and it's it's quite fun to sing the same song every week instead of coming up with new songs every week so the question i think the answer is i would ask my children what do they want if you ask your kids what do they like to sing all right i think if there are no more questions uh we want to say goodbye for now and watch out for other hopefully if there are other webinars in the future and stay tuned with us at east and uh thank you for your kind participations we hope it's been an encouragement to you and i must guarantee you when you do this you see the transformation in your family and you see the fruits of investing in your children's spiritual lives